This video guide is going to show how to do a paired samples t test in SPSS. We use paired samples t test when we have within subjects designs with only two conditions. This current example is looking at the effect of music on feelings of sadness. We have two conditions sadness control condition and sadness LC, and that stands for sadness Leonard Cohen. And what we're interested in is whether music can make individuals feel sad. So what we do, we play them some particularly depressing music by Leonard Cohen, and we compare that to another experimental condition in which they just have to listen to somebody reading out a dictionary, so it should be an emotionally neutral condition. The numbers within each column refers to sadness ratings on a 100 millimeter visual analog scale, which is anchored from zero, from feeling absolutely no sadness whatsoever, to 100, as sad as an individual feels they could be possibly feel. So what we're interested in is whether the scores in the Leonard Cohen condition are significantly higher than those in the control condition. To run a pair of samples t-test, we need to go to analyze, and then compare means. All the t-test related things are under compare means and paired samples t-test. Some people refer to them as within subjects t-tests, repeated measures t-test and so on. But it all means the same thing as in the, you're testing the same individual under two different conditions. So we select paired samples t-test. It's a very straightforward thing to do a paired samples t-test in SPSS. So you've got pair one, variable one, variable two, and you simply click across your variables, like so. You can, if you've got lots of different pairs that you want to look at, you can put as many in as you want once you fill in another set of pairs, and then you'll see another set. So you can run multiple pair samples to test at once. We're only interested in this, we've only got two columns of data. So does the sadness in the control condition, is that lower than the sadness in the Leonard Cohen condition? That's all we really got to do to run that. We click on OK. And this gives us our paired samples t test output. So the first table we've got here is just the paired sample statistics table. And you can see we've got pair one. So it always refers to the things that you put into the um, SPSS com command box as pair one sadness control versus sadness Leonard Cohen. And then we've got a mean. N, simply the number of participants, and there's 40. There's obviously 40 in both because everyone's contributing a score to each condition. Standard deviation, so we've got our mean, a standard deviation, and also we've got our standard error of the mean, generally speaking. When you report descriptives, you tend to report the mean and the standard deviation. Next table is a paired sample correlation. What this is, is a Pearson's correlation between those two. If you were to run a Pearson's correlation, you'd get exactly the same correlation coefficient. You don't really need to report this. Um, I suppose the only thing to note is that higher this correlation, the lower the standard error, and therefore the more likely you are to find a statistically significant result, therefore reject the null hypothesis. But you don't really need to report this correlation at all. This is the table that contains these critical statistics that you, you're most interested in. Um, so these are the pair differences, so this is the mean difference, and the mean difference is simply the difference between those two there. You've got the standard deviation of the mean difference and the standard error of the mean difference. It also gives you 95% confidence intervals for the difference as well. When we're reporting it though, it's the t-statistic, the degrees of freedom, and the degrees of freedom is the number of participants minus one, and there is our p-value as well. So if you we were to write this up, we take the appropriate statistics from this table and we write something along the lines of sadness ratings were significantly higher following listening to Leonard Cohen compared to the control condition. And we report our t-statistic, which has got the degrees of freedom in brackets afterwards, and our p-value there as well. You'll note we've got a minus t statistic, and I've mentioned this in some other videos if you've seen them. Because you're just comparing two conditions, we don't really need to include this minus here, due to the way I've constructed the sentence, because we know that sadness ratings 
with significantly higher final Leonard Cohen compared to the control condition. The only reason this is a minus is just the order that I've put this into SPSS. I could have put in Leonard Cohen first and control second and that would have been a positive 2.810. So I don't believe it actually really matters that much if you put in a minus in front of that statistic at all. Fran, your sentence is clear. It's very obvious which in which of the experimental condition scores are higher than the other. There's no real value to that as a minus figure at all. Of course, we shouldn't be complete reliant on p-values. The thing we should always give when we're given any statistics is all also give an effect size in some way. So if you want to calculate the effect size um, for a paired samples t-test, it's a quite a straightforward procedure. You've got all the statistics you need to do it in this table here. Because Cohen's D is the mean difference divided by the standard deviation of the mean difference. So using this data here, we can get this formula. So Cohen's D is 4.425 divided by 9.9586. If we do that, we get a Cohen's D of 0.44. And we can add that to the end of our sentence. So we've got, not only can we see there's a statistically significant result, we can now tell our reader about what the size of this difference is, what's the magnitude of this difference. And we could also describe our effect in, in the way we talk about effect sizes. So we've got a small to medium effect size here based upon these criteria given here. As a disclaimer I actually quite like Leonard Cohen so I'm not insulting Leonard Cohen if I wanted to insult bands I would be insulting Coldplay or some other terribly rotten band such as them.